I'm here on behalf of the CEO to hand deliver a letter, uh, which we regret. Draw the microphone closer. Okay, sorry. I am here on behalf of the uh, CEO who asked me to hand deliver a letter to your office, sir, um, uh, which uh, essentially requests that we reschedule this session to the second week of September, sir. Um, so two things. One, you have brought that letter at 10.25. Our meetings start at 10. And if you have always come before 10, you bring the letter at 10.25. Uh, I don't know what you take this, this team for. It's as if you, imagine, you people imagine we are idle and disorderly. Uh, we don't have much to do that we can sit here and wait for you. And then at 10.25, you're bringing a letter saying you're requesting to reschedule. What, what kind of drama is this? What do you people take us for? Uh, sir, the delay is highly regretted. It is not how we operate at Uganda Airlines. Um, it is highly regretted that uh, it was totally beyond uh, our control. And well, while we were trying to deliver this, we uh, tried to request that our colleagues who uh, try to call ahead of time that, that to inform that we would be delayed by a few minutes, barring all the all the um, the, 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 the process of getting into the, the this this uh, distinguished building, sir. Was this some kind of emergency? Because we last met you people on Thursday 18. That's last week, and we notified you we are with you again on Tuesday today. Yes, sir. So why, why is it happening as an emergency that you're coming to inform us when the meeting should have started? Because these members were here before 10, you're coming way after 10, as if, we, as if you just got to know last night that you're meant to come. Or it wasn't an emergency, sir. However, we, we tried to, uh, these pre-planned engagements, we tried to reschedule them, and uh, these were mostly external stakeholders who had already planned these dates for us. And when we tried to reschedule, it was going to um, throw a lot into the plans of the uh, throw a lot of the plans that the company had set uh, into disarray. So it, it, it is it is not that we 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 thought about it. Say last night we were trying to find a way right until the last moment. We're trying to find a way to reschedule this for the sake of this this committee meeting. No, but you see, Mr. Kalisa, you said you're Kalisa who? Michael. Kalisa Michael. Yes, sir. I, I, I don't know. You see, all of this continues to portray how you guys at Uganda Airlines are extremely disorganized. You know, you run a timely entity. Planes are supposed to take off at a particular time and all of that, you know. Yes, we scheduled a meeting with you for 10 a.m. last week, but you're informing us now and you're saying... Uh, it's because you were still trying to, to reschedule. I, I don't understand how you people expect us to take you people serious. Um, uh, I, 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 your, 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 your discontent size is noted, and I, I, I come here with very high uh, regrets and apologies because um, we tried all we could up until the very last moment. Mr. So. Chairman, I have uh, an objection to make. Yes, yes Honourable. Your lawyers were interested so much in uh, technicalities. First of all, Mr. Kalisa, you came in here to deliver a letter, but you're giving depth explanations about your bosses not attending to this very important session. I think that is wrong. I believe you have no capacity to talk on their behalf. Maybe he does. He's on top management. He's the quality manager. No, quality manager, sir, but uh, we, we summoned top management, including the CEO. Yes, sir. And uh, ideally, you are serving this letter directly to the chairman in a session which has taken because we've had the word of prayer. So for us, we are what? Are you willing to answer to some of these queries so that we can go ahead? Because I can see you have the capacity to explain. No, sir. Yes, if no, you are sir, not, I cannot. I, I would ask and request the chairman to to stand over this session. You go back with your letters and let your boss come and seek for an adjournment here or her counsel. Because we can only talk to a witness or counsel. For you, 
if you want to deliver the letters, you go through the system of delivering letters. The chairman of this committee is a very important person. You cannot just serve letters anyhow like this. You go through the parliamentary procedures of serving letters to parliament, because this is not a personal love letter to the chairman. That is one. Two, we cannot, you cannot be seen addressing these issues, like you're saying, uh, to do with that again, because you're not the witness. So let her come here, or council, and we had done formally. For the record, this is a very big institution. Don't just play around, please. Yeah, I'm not blaming you, but I think they're trying to send you here because you cannot hold on. Otherwise, you will not let you go until they come. Because the moment we open the session, as far as we're concerned, we're expecting witnesses. If you want to add Jan, they come and add Jan formally. For the record, yeah, we are not in a Marwa club. Mr. Kalisa, um, your quality manager, what does your job entail at Uganda Airlines? Sorry, sir, basically compliance. Compliance with standards. Mm. Yes. Why, why did they send you specifically? Uh, are you the one that normally delivers no. letters on behalf of the CEO or on behalf no. of Uganda Airlines? No. Um, that's why I mentioned earlier that we... Uh, all the logistics that we normally use, uh, the logistical support, uh, was uh, unfortunately not available this morning, sir. So all the office assistants, attendants, and so on uh, are away. It had to be the quality manager. No, it, it was a come and deliver circumstance, this. sir. It was just circumstance that this letter needed to be delivered. So um, rather than wait for someone to move. Um, across town, we 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 we, we thought proactively and uh, and and submitted the work to submit this letter. Well, L let me get a copy of what you have brought. So, let, let me read to you the letter. Uh, it's addressed to myself, invitation for a meeting. Uganda National Airlines Company Limited, doing business as Uganda Airlines, presents compliments to your honorable member of parliament and acknowledge receipt of your letter uh, dated 19th August 2022 with the above subject. In the letter, you stated that the committee would like to meet the management of the airline's company on Tuesday, 23rd August at 10 a.m. in Conference Hall A. We appreciate the call for the meeting and would like to be there. However, Uganda Airlines has critical scheduled activities that we had prepared for and confirmed months ago with different external stakeholders that require the entire management team at different touch points to be wholly involved. We therefore humbly request the committee of Kosase to reschedule the above meeting to the second week of September to allow the management team to ably conclude with these critical airline projects that are key for the growth and future of the airline. We regret to inform you that the former CEO, Mr. Conwell Mulea, is no longer an employee of the airline and the airline has no jurisdiction over him. We look forward to hearing from you soon on the request for new dates of the meeting. Please be assured of our commitment to conclude on all items raised. Signed, Jennifer Bamturaki, Chief Executive Officer. She actually didn't sign this. Somebody signed for her. Is that so? Yeah. Who signed for her? Uh, Microphone. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sir. Sorry. Uh, uh, one of the other senior members signed for her. Who is that? Uh, that was myself. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes, Honorable Bashir Kazim. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Karisa. Mr. Karisa. Uh, 
yes sir you said you are the head of quality at Uganda Airlines compliance yes sir right yes sir did you you said you you wrote that letter uh, it was drafted for the CEO. Who drafted the letter? Uh, herself and uh, the, the other colleagues. When was it drafted? It was drafted on the 19th of August, sir. That is Friday? Yes, sir. Why is it here now? Not yesterday and not Friday? Uh, that was uh, be a, it matters beyond our control, sir. She drafted the letter on Friday, the yes, day sir. after she had left this committee? Yes, sir. When was it signed? It was actually signed on Friday. Who signed the letter? Hmm? Who signed the letter? Simple. Myself, sir. When? We signed it on Friday. We, you? Eh? Myself, sir. So she drafted the letter mm. and she could not, after drafting that huge letter, she yes. could not afford to sign and you signed? Um, Why? I, I cannot explain. I'll... So after, dra after drafting the letter, she gives you to sign? Was Someone drops a letter on that very day, 19th Friday, mm. and she cannot append a signature on the same. What was and she around she as you signed this letter? Yes, she was. She was in the room? Um, was she in the room when you signed this letter? No. <coughs> Are you sure about that? Yes, I am sure. Where was she? You know, I, I don't understand how you guys at Uganda Airlines operate. All of these things worry us because this is our national carrier, uh, money invested therein by Ugandans. And, and people are concerned about how you guys operate. So here is a letter which you're saying was drafted by the CEO and afterwards she gave you to sign on her behalf. Why, does that make sense to you? Why, why? What reason did she give you for not signing herself and then she asked you to sign it on her behalf? What reason were you given? Indeed, sir. I, am, I didn't say I was an office messenger, sir. I said I was a messenger and I'd come to deliver a letter. So please respond to why you signed it and not her. Because you are saying, except if you're lying and you're the one who has drafted this letter. No, I'm not lying. So you're saying she drafted the letter and then she gave you to sign. Why? What reason were you given? Um, the idea, sir, was the letter had to go on Friday. Mm -hmm. The idea was it had to go on Friday. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for one logistical reason or the other, it did not go, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, that doesn't explain why you signed it instead of the CEO. Now, um, yes. And, and you see, if there is truth you're trying to hide, you better not, because I'm probably about to put you on oath. I see you fumbling no, no, a lot. No, it is so could you tell us the truth? There is no fumbling, sir. There is no fumbling. Uh, we, we delegate to ensure there's continuity. So after this letter was signed, she was unable to sign it on Friday. She asked that any of us, the seniors, sign it on her behalf. And the idea was that it should go on Friday. For one reason or the other, sir, it never, it wasn't delivered. No, but you see, what, what I'm struggling to make sense of yeah. is you saying she drafted the letter. I would understand if she was maybe out of the country. Chair, we are not hearing what the... You, you need to draw the, the microphone. The manager quality assurance is saying, let him respond to three questions, which you have already asked him. Number one, the last time... The team was here was Thursday. The letter is talking about pre-planned engagements. The first question is why this was not communicated last week. Number two, you have already asked. He said the letter was drafted by the CEO, but the letter was signed by him. Why did the CEO sign the letter herself? Number three, that letter was written and signed on Friday last week. Today it is Tuesday. Why was that letter not delivered on Friday? Why not on Monday yesterday? Why not 
in the morning today before the meeting started. And he chooses to bring the letter 25 minutes into the meeting time. Let him just respond to those questions. Thank you, Chair. Please go ahead and respond. Um, Honorable, I beg to start with the last one. Um, I actually was at the gate by 9.25 uh, with the intention of doing this before the meeting started. However, today the protocols to enter changed, so I was asked to, uh, since today I was a visitor, I was asked to go back and park outside, outside the parliamentary building, whereas before we would normally enter and get in, in the, be processed in less than five minutes. So that entire turnaround time took all this time, and uh, the, 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 all the receptionists directed me to the Honorable's office. And uh, uh, they directed me to the Honorable's office, despite uh, um, me asking them to deliver the letter to the clerk, as I had been instructed. But, but do, you, do you notice, as a yes, follow-up, do you notice if you guys had delivered this letter on Friday? Yes, sir. Or Saturday? Parliament is open we, on Saturday. Now, that if you had delivered it on Friday or Saturday, or worst-case scenario, Monday, yes, sir. you'd not be having these excuses. Totally, and, and, and I, I... Because also, Mr. Kalisa, do, do you imagine, because we prepare for these meetings and members report early, so do you imagine that you were going to now communicate to us the time you're saying you came, and then we focus on other things so that members don't come? These people are very busy. They have constituencies to attend to. They have other committees to attend to, you know, so that they get to know in advance and attend to these other things. But somehow you imagined you... You, these guys are idle and disorderly. They don't have much to do. We can inform them when the session is already ongoing and then they can adjust their program. I, I find you guys extremely disrespectful and even arrogant in many cases. I, 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 I don't know if... Um, I, 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 Honorable Chair, I... Um, uh, and, and you'll forgive me if I break protocol. I, I beg, I don't think we, we, we won, we are arrogant. I'm saying, I think. I, That's I, what I'm I, thinking, because I, of your conduct all this while. Because you, you cannot surely be that uncourteous. You are notified of a meeting on Thursday. You're saying you draft the letter on Friday, but you choose to bring it on the day of the meeting, when the meeting is already meant to be ongoing, and you're asking us to, to reschedule. What, what do you guys take us for? And I, I, I sincerely, uh, on behalf of my colleagues, apologize for this because it is one of those situations that is totally under, out of our control, sir. Respond so, to the other questions. Yes. Why wasn't it communicated on Thursday? So we... Uh, on Friday, sorry. On Friday. So the, the... Like I mentioned, we had pre-planned commitments and... Uh, when we, uh, we tried the first option because of the importance of this committee, uh, uh, colleagues, uh, honorable members of parliament, our commitment is to have the support of the public of Uganda. So considering the, the criticality of this committee, we try to look for the option of rescheduling these other planned meetings that we had with all the other external stakeholders. That was the very first option, and this um, unfortunately did not, did not uh, happen right until the very last moment, which was yesterday. So um, that was where we, 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 we now sought to deliver this letter today. Just and a, yes. a, a rejoinder through you, Mr. Chairperson. Brother Car Carissa says they tried all avenues to see that they can push maybe to be able to, to meet us yes, up to the last minute yesterday. Yes, sir. But the letter was written on Friday. Yes, sir. Because Does this make sense? No, you, you write the letter already, but then you say we are still pushing after having written the letter on Friday? Because uh, um, uh, I, I, there is a big lie. No, there is no big that lie. That is coming out of you, brother. Sir, there is no big lie. No, 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 no. no. You, you, and, the, letter, the letter was written on Friday. And if I may correct the record, uh, I 
believe the oath we took last week still stands? Yes, it does. So, mm-hmm. so I, I, I would be very, how do I say, what's the word? It would be very, the, the English start fails me now, but it would, be very, it would be very disorganized of me and very reckless of me to get out of oath. I, and and, 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 and that, that, that I remember very well that M- Mr. Uh, we were put under oath. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, from what I see, we may not get much from the from the messenger. He's, he's the manager, quality from assurance. The manager, he signed on behalf of the CEO. Mr. Chairman, the manager is giving us contrary information. He started with, was drafted on Friday by the CEO herself. After drafting, she didn't have the guts to sign the letter no. by herself. No, sir. That wasn't it, sir. Monday comes, they're still contemplating whether they can come to meet us. Finally, the letter is arriving here today at 10.25. Mr. Chairman, from what I see, the entry is not serious. And the manager who is here, I think uh, if we are to pick anything from him, we can perhaps hand him to our CID for further interrogation because the, the way he's giving us information is not clear. I think uh, from what we see from the media and what uh, the CEO has been saying on the different media platforms, okay. it really Honorable explains Joyce. that they, they don't value us, so we should begin to buy it. Honorable Joyce, then Honorable. I was sympathetic to the manager quality assurance but uh, as he went on explaining I have observed that he could be the author of that letter because you can't say you signed the letter when the CEO herself was there that is almost unbelievable Mr. Chairman, I'm seeing that uh, grilling this gentleman here before us is not going to help us. The way forward could be we disown this letter, uh, let the gentleman take the letter back, the CEO herself writes the letter, brings it, and submits it in a, a procedural way, manner. That is my submission chair okay honorable santa uh, my, that we should get to know that there is no speculation which the officer is talking about in the middle that monday were they were still speculating to come these people made their mind on friday or maybe even thursday after the meeting here not to come to the kosase meeting because the letter was written on Friday and signed on Friday. That means he should stop lying to us that there was speculation we were going to come. Why did you write and sign on Friday? Meaning you already made a conclusion not to come to this meeting. So there's no speculation to me that I see. They made a conclusion on Friday not to come to attend this meeting. And it should be sincere to tell us the truth. Okay, colleagues. Um, this is the letter that was written by the board chairperson yesterday, 22nd August. At least this one came yesterday. And we, had invi- we invited the board for Thursday. Invitation for a meeting on Thursday, 25th August, 2022. Uh, it's addressed to myself, the chairperson. Reference is made to yours dated 19th August, 2022, inviting the board of directors of Uganda National Airlines Company Limited for a meeting on the 25th of August 2022 on the ongoing consideration of the report of the Auditor General for the financial year 2020-2021. We wish to inform you that we have a scheduled ordinary board meeting on the same day of 25th August 2022 that has to consider matters of the company that have time frames that cannot be postponed. 
The purpose of this letter is to request you to reschedule the meeting to a later date. We also request that you send us specific issues for which you need answers to so that we prepare the necessary explanations. The last paragraph, which I have more interest in. Furthermore, I wish to bring to your notice that the aviation industry is a highly sensitive industry and as such, some discussions, if made public, can be construed to mean that the airline can never be trusted, thus endangering its future viability. Pursuant to this, I further humbly request that all further meetings of the airline with your esteemed committee should be held without the press to limit damage to the entire airline. We take this opportunity to assure you of our commitment to cooperate with you for the good of the airline. Yours sincerely, Priscilla Mirembe Seruka, Chairperson Board of Directors. I get the feeling that Uganda Airlines is trying to run away from scrutiny. All these are games you people are playing to run away from public scrutiny. That's the feeling that I get, you know, and that's why uh, you choose to inform us right now when we are already ongoing. I now see a letter by your board chairperson uh, saying, look, you know, we, we want to come, but please let the media not come. This is a public accounts committee. We account to the public. Uganda Airlines is a public entity. Because the taxpayer injects money in this entity. And we are talking trillions so far. And for that matter, it has got to account to the public. So I see you people trying to run away from public scrutiny, trying to run away from the, the torch of the public in whatever it is that you are doing. And I don't understand why. Because if there is nothing to hide, you know, if everything is being done the right way, what's the problem? You know, what, what I seem to feel is, so Kosase is now trying to damage the reputation of Uganda Airlines. But Uganda Airlines has been damaging its own reputation without our involvement by you people in management. We, have, we only began our inquiry last, year, last, last week. Things have been amiss all the while. I, I, I now see some kind of choreographed plan to blame Kosase for the problems of Uganda Airlines. I, um, I beg, I beg, uh, Honourable uh, Chairman, I beg, uh, I beg to defer and yeah. on a difference of opinion. Um, both, both the letters uh, give a commitment to come, and uh, from the aviation industry, when you commit yourself on paper, you can be held accountable till time memorial because there is a record. Uh, I, I want to beg the committee that we consider those commitments that both our board chair and uh, our boss have committed and, and ultimately, ultimately to see to the conclusion of, this, of uh, these, these, these um, uh, meetings. Sir you can hold us accountable to those records and this is this comes from from even from our board and even from our management so colleagues the challenge that i have um we we are time bound in as far as our our work is concerned you had the speaker telling us to operate as quickly as we can uh, because we have limitations of time so when the management of uganda airlines is telling us now that you know what schedule us for three weeks from today because they're talking about the second week of september that's three weeks that's nearly a month from today it's as if to say leave us alone because they know we don't have that time we don't have the luxury of another one month to wait for uganda airlines management for them to be available so they they know that once they ask for a month from today we are going to leave them alone and yet for the sake of the taxpayer we cannot leave uganda airlines alone um, yes, Honorable Njomjeni. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I think uh, it is important to bring it to the notice of uh, Mr. Kalisa that we also have, uh, whereas they are saying they have uh, fully scheduled meetings, we also have a schedule of how we, we meet our, our witnesses and how we do our work. So for you to assume that we should 
go by what you think works for you and uh, while you're ignoring our work schedules as a, a committee, it is foolhardy. But most importantly, Chair, I think uh, what is happening, as you have rightly said, is that there is a, a lot of fear of scrutiny from that side. And to me, that won't help because uh, uh, when, when all these things are happening, especially that the Auditor General did the work, you did responses which you gave to the Auditor General, and for us we are following up on those responses that you gave to the Auditor General. When he was doing the work, you were working hand in hand with the Auditor General. And uh, you knew that the Auditor General is part of Parliament, and therefore these matters must be handled by this committee on behalf of the whole Parliament. So it is too late for you to think that uh, at this point in time, you can run away from the issues of accountability as raised by the Auditor General's office, and then uh, all of a sudden you are in the place telling people how for you are very skilled, you studied from the moon and all that. I've been uh, away, I, I just came back today, but what I've, what I've seen in the place in the last week was so, it was not only shaming, but it was outrageous. Because uh, you, are, you are using uh, money, taxpayers' money, to do work. You get all your salaries from the taxpayers. The same way we do as, as MPs. So, uh, for me, I see a lot of uh, uh, escapism in this whole thing. And it's, it's high time the chair you advised them that it is too late for them to, to run away from accountability. The earlier you come next week and oh, this, even this week from tomorrow and we handle your issues and see the best way forward for this country, the better. I beg to submit, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Chair, I think we can't conclude without uh, maybe at least having a, an input on what uh, the, the last letter you read uh, from the chair board. Chair board was trying to tell us, tell the committee never to use uh, the media as they are invited here. But I am wondering, uh, why shouldn't they want the media? Because first of all, unless they are under classified budget, maybe expenditure, then they can talk about that. Because we don't, we don't scrutinize classified expenditures. You have already said it clearly that uh, this is public funds and uh, it goes through the public scrutiny. That's why we are here after the audit. The auditors have done their work. They bring it to Parliament and COSASE, maybe and other and, uh, public account uh, committees go through those, aud those uh, audit reports. Now, why we are doing this is because this, uh, their report came through the auditor general's, uh, I, I mean, a report. So if they are not under classified expenditure, why should they fear that uh, their issues should not come out in the media? And uh, in any case, if the auditor general is mandated to audit them, then they are there for public scrutiny already by the virtue that the auditor general is auditing them and also bringing their audit results I mean to Parliament. And uh, Chair, I really wonder what is really going on, especially with the Uganda Airlines. I see everybody is very much concerned about uh, what is going on. When you see the media, things are really going out of hands. I wonder why. We have been scrutinizing other institutions, but it has never been this way. Why is it that everybody which are not even concerned about this, are coming up with their issues when the report are not even out. We, are yet, we have just started. We have not even reached the middle. But now everybody wants to interfere. And, uh, and uh, I don't know. I don't know their intentions. I think we should let this one come out and the people should really leave Kosase to do their work. And lastly, Chair, if they are saying that they should not be the media should not be there as we are trying to scrutinize them. 
supposing the report was good, we know that we know that media can destroy and also they can promote. They can promote. So if your report is bad, then you fear media because they will reveal those bad issues that have been found. But now if the report was good, won't they need the media to also sell them out there that uh, what they are doing is good so that the world knows that uh, Uganda Airlines is doing some good job. But now if there is something wrong, they don't want it to be brought out. Why? How will they correct themselves? I think that is a very serious issue, Chair, that uh, we need to look into. And uh, they should not really direct us on what we are supposed to do as a committee. They have to instead do what we really require them to do. I thank you very much. Okay, Honorable Nancy. Thank you. Just a quick one. I, I don't know how Mr. Kalisa feels because we are limited by time. This is already an activity that Kosase Committee had already started and we have time bound. And I am wondering why Uganda Airlines management would sit down and then make a break over when we have already started scrutinizing the airline. I want to request you, because you're here on behalf of the CEO and Uganda Airline Management, that you go back and you reset and re-strategize on those other meetings that has come in the middle of what we are already doing. Because Parliament has time schedule. We cannot put a breakage of three weeks stopping to continue interrogating the work that Uganda Airlines is doing, and yet what will we be doing? Because at the end of the day, we also need to report to the House. We are limited by time, and time is an enemy of man. So it is our humble request to you that please go and tell and inform the management that Kosase cannot wait, but for them they can wait. Those other people you're meeting, you can wait. This is something very important. Once we dispose it off, you will also be very free. And I want to add on what my colleague has just said, that whatever the committee is doing, we are not trying to which earn the staff and the management of Uganda Airlines. At it is being quoted in the hair there. We feel so bad when we want to save this country and then some other people think we have selfish interests. I think we are doing the work on behalf of the ordinary Ugandans whose money also has gone into Uganda Airlines. We are talking about taxpayers' money. And we want Uganda to move to the next level, income, a middle-income country. How will we reach there when Uganda Airlines is making losses and we are trying to talk here? People think we are talking bad. I beg to submit, Mr. Chair. Okay, Honorable and colleagues, this is our sad entity to handle. I think it is not the fourth worse. actually. Yes, fourth actually. It is not worse. The other three entities, the press has been there again for this one, one and we exempt them. It means we are almost exercising corruption. Indeed, I request through you, Chair that we should not exempt these people by taking away the press because we are working in broad and we are saying we are fighting corruption so that we reach where my colleague has said, the middle status. So without that, we shall not reach there. I think it is automatically they should also accept and exempt us from being said that we are what? Corrupt. Okay. Uh, Honorable PND and finally Honorable Gaffer. So that Thank you, Chair. Chair, at first I thought I shouldn't give any comment on this, but I feel that I must say something. First of all, Chair, I think this committee should not just leave Kalisa the way he is as just a quality assurance manager. My view is all the messes that Uganda Airlines is facing, Carissa is part and partial of that. And Chair, I'm saying this because uh, Carissa just said that the CEO drafted the letter 
and she could not sign. But he, among the members of the management team, she shows Kalisa to sign. And again, Kalisa, being big headed, he chose to bring the letter himself. And I think in their meeting he said, For me, you leave them for, to me, I will handle them. And that's why he's here. So, so Kalisa uh, uh, shouldn't be just taken for granted. He, he has something. He's a bright boy, he has something behind him. But I want to tell him that the image of the airline that they think they are protecting, they are just making it worse. Because like colleagues have said, this, this is a public entity and it is an entity that requires me to come and buy a ticket and I fly with you. So if Ugandans think that you are not doing what you are supposed to do, they can choose otherwise. And that would be dangerous to our entity, to our airline. So as you sit there and with that arrogance of yours and then think we are here to waste time, we are here to to fight you, we are here to, 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 to make you lose your job, that is not the case. And this is not the first entity, and it is not the last entity. We are here as the accountability committee to go through all those things that are raised as concerns by the Auditor General. Okay, finally, Honorable Gaffer. Uh, Thank you, Chair. Uh, for me, I think we are just uh, moving in circles. We've spent over one hour. Today we are supposed to be uh, interacting with the management of Uganda Airlines. Mr. Kalisa is part of management. My suggestion, my proposal is that we proceed with him as a management, if he is able to sign on behalf of the CEO, then he can be able to represent even the CEO here. We proceed. Number two, uh, Chair and colleagues, I have uh, a problem with the two letters. One is giving us a specific period that we can interface with them. The other one is giving us, is asking us to reset you. So meaning we can reset you, the one from the board, even next week. And for them, the board, they have even indicated the specific activity that is coinciding with our invitation. And that can be very well understood. But within that, we are supposed to meet the board and then the Minister of Finance and the Minister of Works. So the fact that the board is not available on that day, we can still go ahead to meet the other uh, the ministers, finance and works. But for management, for me, my proposal is that we proceed. Lastly, my my instincts are telling me, are whispering to me, that the CEO of Uganda Airlines is not aware of that letter. I want us to go an extra mile to confirm that that letter is known by the CEO. My instincts are whispering that this letter was drafted by Mr. Kalisa and signed by him, and the CEO is not aware about it. Tomorrow the CEO will come here and will deny any knowledge of that letter. Thank you, Chair. Okay, um, let, let's do this. Hmm? One minute. Microphone. Mr. Kalisa, in your own Why do you think 
that uh, you are the best uh, person in Uganda Airlines. One, to have uh, signed the letter, then two, to have delivered it to this committee at a late hour. Okay, uh, Mr. Kalisa was telling me he wanted to respond. I'll give you three minutes, whatever you want to say, and then I'll see how I close this out. Okay. Um, thank you, Chair. I wish I wish to react first to to the insinuation that the CEO is not aware. I came here with a full authority, sir. I came here with a full authority. Um, I, I don't know how better to say that, sir. I, I, I don't know how better to say that. It is unfortunate the way Uganda Airlines is being portrayed. Um, our first commitment, if you look at our vision and mission, it is to give safe transport. How do we give safe transport to the public? How do we give safe transport to you, our honorable members? We have to operate on a basis of trust. Our practices in aviation usually, uh, you will appreciate that we are highly regulated. Our practice normally when we are invited for um, inquiries like this. Um, usually uh, we propose, a date is proposed to us and considering that there are already ongoing activities, we usually, uh, and it is, it is not in any disrespect, I really beg, that is not in any disrespect to this committee, sir. On times when we can't make it, we request for a rescheduling. It is a normal practice honorable chair, honorable members here, for us to ask for rescheduling. Okay. And, 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 and I, I beg to finish, please. This is really with no disrespect. I wish to go back to, you've, you've had a chance to read our business plan. Those, those, those three sentences, the mission, vision, values. No, but you see, I don't written, want, uh, Mr. Kalisa, I, and, I don't want you to take, want, yes, Mr. Sir, Kalisa? Yes, sir. I don't want you to take us on a TED talk here. Yes. You know, you see our I, mission, I our vision, we are reliable, and, and all of that. Yes. Yeah? We invited you people here. You have not showed up. You have brought a letter at the time when the meeting should have started. So for you to begin to tell us, you see, we are very committed and all of that, you are just agitating what, us the more. What I I'm going to stop you at that. Um, so the thing is, as a committee, we deal with accounting officers. And uh, that responsibility cannot be delegated, except when somebody else is hired, or that kind of thing, you know? Mr. Kalisa here is not the accounting officer, even though he signed a letter on behalf of the accounting officer. Uh, I am not going to take this as communication, asking for an adjournment, because one, if you are serious, it should have come last week, or at the very latest, maybe Monday, yesterday, not at 10.25, and not even signed by the CEO. To totally agreed, sir. Signed by yourself. So what we are going to do, um, we are going to issue summons today for the CEO of Uganda Airlines to appear here tomorrow without fail. If she does not show up tomorrow, we are going to issue a warrant of arrest. We have those powers as a committee. And so, it is within, it's for her own good to show up tomorrow, because we are going to issue those summons today, right after here, for her to show up tomorrow. And then we can listen to whatever she wants to tell us. I don't regard this as communication, because one, the letter has been signed by you, not the CEO, and two, we, 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 we don't count it as proper communication, because if you were to want to ask for an extension, you, you don't ask for it when the meeting is already ongoing. That should have come earlier. So I don't regard this at all. So she had better show up tomorrow. We're going to issue those summons today, right after here. If she does not show up tomorrow, 
then we shall issue a warrant of arrest uh, for police to arrest her from wherever she is and bring her here. And I don't think she wants us to go that direction. So tomorrow, as the CEO shows up, without fail, I need to emphasize, without fail, we will also have Mr. Conwell Mulea, who is former CEO. Um, of course, according to this letter, written either by Jennifer or Kalisa here, I don't know, they say they don't have jurisdiction over uh, Mr. Conwell Mulea. Granted, but we reached him as a committee, and he is coming tomorrow. Because he was CEO of Uganda Airlines, we want him to explain um, his role at the time he was in charge. Because as a committee, we have mandate even over former employees of these entities. Recently, we had the IGG, the Honorable Betty Kamia, even though she is IGG now, but we had her in her capacity as former Minister of Lands when we were investigating the Uganda Land Commission. And so, it is in that capacity that we are going to have Mr. Conwell Mulea tomorrow, and the CEO of Uganda Airlines had better show up tomorrow. And then on Thursday, we will have the Ministers of Works and Transport and the Minister of Finance, because these are the two shareholders, 50%, 50%. Uh, the board was meant to come with them. They have requested for an extension. These we can consider maybe, because at least their communication came in advance, and they have specifically told us what it is they will be doing on that day that will cause them to be unable to be present on that day, so we can consider. Yeah, so, so that's how we will proceed, colleagues. Uh, unfortunately, we have to end it here today. Uh, and Mr. Kalisa, as the CEO comes tomorrow, make sure you are part of the team, whoever it is he chooses to come, yeah? Because you have written this letter and you have signed it. Because, you see, for me, the, 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 the signature um, presupposes ownership of a document. So we want you to be present tomorrow also without fail, together with the CEO. I'll, I'll be here, sir. Okay, so let's adjourn this meeting. We'll be here tomorrow at 10 a.m.